let's do it. Areas between between graphs. graphs. Areas between graphs. This requires several steps, and that's why I think you should. I think you'll do good, but just kind of need to know what is going on and why we're doing all of this. Let's do the example. The example is find the area, calculate the area, find the area. Chris, no, oh, this time it was not Chris. <laughs> I'm sorry. You guys concentrate. Between, between the, uh, or enclosed or bounded by functions. Y equals X squared and Y equals minus X plus two. Okay, let's start. Let me list the steps while you're writing this down. The steps are, A, you will have to draw a picture that will cost points. I already put it there. You'll have to draw the picture. B, find points of intersections before, because integral requires to have points of intersections. C, choose the case. We have type one, type two, or I call it case one, case two. Something is always on the top and at the bottom or on the right or on the left. And finally, calculate the integral. It requires like five full steps, so it's a perfect free response problem. And if you do all of them, it will cost you lots of points, so that's very good. If you just learn this one problem, it already gives you lots of points on the test. And I just gave away it's gonna be on the test, so you should, you should practice that. Solution, step one, sketch. Yes, thank you, I do. Uh, sketch the graph. And then I give you x-axis and y-axis, and you sketch it. Sketch means you don't have to be precise, but you should understand what is happening. Parabola y equals x squared is a nice looking parabola like so. Sign it, because you will need to know if it's on the top or at the bottom. Lines, do you have problems with drawing lines? You take this line, and you just need two points, x and y, and just two points randomly choose it. For example, zero gives you two, or two gives you zero, very nice, just random points. I will change the color. At zero, it is two. At two, it is zero. This gives you the line, and you keep going up and down. This gives you some kind of enclosed or bounded by those two graphs area. This is how it looks like. <laughs> I cannot draw. Can you imagine this on the final exam? You're like, I cannot draw. <laughs> So this is already cost points. Nice, you finished the graph, it's good. Step two, step two, choose the case. Choose, is it type one or type two? I call it case one, case two. Choose your case. We have two cases, let me remind you about that. So case one is when one function is always on top of another function, at least on that interval you need. Then the integral will be from a to b, it will be in terms of x, so you need to find a and b on x-axis. There will be a function f of x. f of x goes first, that's the one on the top, minus g of x. That is the one at the bottom, dx. This is what we called type 1 integral. I call it case 1, bless you. Case 1. Case 2 Case two was when one function, at least on this interval, is on the right, and the other one is on the left. They might switch later, but at least here it's the case. Here it is. Then you need to find C and D on the y-axis. And the integral becomes integral from, I should change the order of C and D, alphabetically, from C to D. The integral will be integral from c to d, still f of x minus g of x. But now it's actually dy, so it should be dy, dy, everything in terms of y. But now the one is on the top, it's not on the top, it's on the right. f of y is on the right, and then the other one is on the left. g of y is on the left. So it's always bigger and smaller. The one is on the right is bigger than the one is on the left, and the one is on the top is bigger than the one is at the bottom. 
So you kind of memorize it. One is always bigger. Why you keep jumping? Stop jumping. So the idea is sometimes there is a hint. If all the functions are given in terms of y equals f of x, and it's hard to solve for x, probably you should choose case one. If functions are given mixed, or it's easy to solve for x as the function of y, then you know choose case two. So that kind of makes sense. Let's see here. What do you think we should do here? Which case should we choose? To be honest, both will work because the line is on the right. The line is on the right and probably is on the left. I'm actually not necessary, no. In this case, I draw it. At some point, parabola is both on the right and on the left. So you see case two is already not working. It's only gonna work just like you mentioned case one. The line, which I should have signed, the line called minus x plus two is on the top. And the parabola is at the bottom. So it is case one. Sometimes it can be done in both ways. Then you can choose which one is easier. Since we choose in case one, we need to find A on the x-axis and B on the x-axis. And build the integral from A to B. Choose the case. We chose case one, which is top minus the bottom case. It's like a scan. Let me remind you one more time. That the scanning idea is I'm scan integral from A to B. That is a rectangle, like so. From A to B, I'm scanning from left to right, from left to right, from left to right. That is too much. And that's why the function, the idea top minus the bottom makes it better because it does it from the function to the function, from the function to the function. This net gives you the area of the shape. From A to B, it's too much. From function to function, it's exactly what you need. It's like a CAT scan. It goes one direction and the other direction. But it always goes from bigger to smaller inside of the integral. So points of intersection, that is step three. Points of intersection. In this case, we only need A and B, while for A and B. While for the other one, we need C and D. So I mean x equals a and x equals b. While for the second case, we need C, y equals c and y equals d. To find points of intersection, you need to set both equations equal to each other. And so in this case, for x, you just need x. We have y equals x squared, and we have y equals minus x plus 2 build a system. Since left hand side are the same, right hand side are also the same, must be. Move everything to the one side to see what is happening. That is a quadratic equation. Solve it the way you know it. Maybe a formula, maybe a shortcut. Quadratic formula always works. So for example, I will do like so, x plus two and x minus one. If you know what I just did, I'm using theorem of Yeta, but in general, you can use anything you want. Just make sure it's correct. So I have two roots, x equals minus 2 and x equals 1. And you should kind of check it if it makes sense from the picture. Yeah, it makes sense. Minus, minus 2 is a little bit to the left. 1 is a little bit to the right, twice smaller than to the left. So it kind of makes sense from the picture. Make sure it makes sense. Now you're ready to start building the integral. For the case two, if you ever choose case two, you have to have one more step. You need to solve for x and solve for x. So we don't do it in this case because it's case one. So that's less work. Last step, you finally build the integral, step four. You build the integral and solve it. Build and solve. Solve the the <laughs> integral integral. Chris, don't get distracted. <laughs> From minus two to one, that is my integral. It's going to be dx. We chose case one. I can even write down case one means dx. Integral with respect to x from a to b, from minus two to one. 
The function at the top, I don't remember which one is at the top, and that's why signing them is so good, or coloring them. Seems like the line is at the top, so minus x plus 2 goes first. Minus x plus 2 going, yes. Minus the one at the bottom, and the bottom was y equals x squared dx top minus the bottom. So even building this integral will cost you lots of points on the test. But now you actually also need to solve it. And it's just integration. We just repeated it on Wednesday. Integration, you do it for a month already. So I think you're very good at this now. Let's see. Minus x gives you minus x squared over 2. Plus 2, that's plus 2x. Minus x squared, it's minus x cubed over 3. Agree, disagree, any mistake? Mm -hmm. Instead of plus c, what do we do? Bar. A bar. So, on the exam it says you should not use calculator to do this. Whatever I'm just did, you're supposed to write it down. It says that on the exam. Do not use calculator, do it algebraically, because we need to know you know what you're doing. So this cost points, all of that cost points. Plug the top minus the bottom. Minus, so 1 is easy. Minus 1 half plus 2 minus 1 third. That is my 1. And then minus 2 is the one that will require some careful parentheses. Minus is part of the formula. Open parentheses. These parentheses will change the whole idea, so don't forget them. Now, minus in front, minus 2 squared. That did not really matter, but it's fine. Let's put it. Plus 2 times minus 2 minus, and this one matters because minus 2 cubed actually is negative. So all these parentheses, they matter. If you have a good habit to put parentheses, you will likely not lose any negative sign. Calculate. And you will get the answer, which I don't have, so we have to calculate. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, maybe something will cancel out, so let me just keep it like so. Let's carefully take a pencil and calculate this piece. 2 times 2 times 2, uh, two times two is 4, over 2 is 2, but it's negative 2, so minus 2. And it's inside of the parentheses. So at some point it will be positive. So I'll write down lower over here plus 2, like so. This part is minus 4, but there's a negative sign in front of parentheses. So it's going to be plus 4. And this part is negative 8 over 3. Negative, negative made it positive, but it's also negative right in front. Let me do it like this. Minus 4, minus 8 over, th minus, minus, like so. Minus minus is positive and then negative, right? Negative one third. Let's see. Oh, I see. Found it. Thank you. Change that. Yeah, this one. So, okay, nothing canceled out. I was hoping for that, but it's fine. <laughs> Negative 1 half, let's keep it. 2 plus 2 is 4, 4 plus 4 is 8. And then I have minus 9 over 3. That is 3. Okay, we're almost there. 8 minus 3 is 5 plus 5. 5 minus half is 4.5. Nice. This is the area, it should be positive. If you got negative area, you probably must start either with a negative sign or with the order. Which one goes on top and which one goes at the bottom. How do you like that? This is a long problem, so it costs quite a lot of points on the test. So I'm warning you, I'm revealing that it is going to be on the exam, and you better study it, because it's cool that if you can do all of this, you already earn lots of points on the test. Maybe even start with this problem. Just find it there in the free response and start with it. And that's how you do well. What? Certainly helps that way that I can do that. That's going to be there. And all the functions I give you are easy to graph. I don't expect you to struggle with graphing too much. So you should be very good at this. I have high hopes on this problem. Now, we did integration by parts. How about the regression thing? 
the regression thing and average amount. Yeah, let's do average value. Questions about this? What do you think? Do you remember this? How does it feel? And so on. Average value then. Let me put it in the red. Average value. Doom. Here it is. Average value is again. You have, for example, five exams. You already took them. What is your average grade? You add up all the grades. That is integral. Fancy addition of different things is integration. That's why it's connected to this Riemann sums, which is a sum sign. You add up all your grades, and then that's not enough. That's just sum of all the grades. To find the average, you divide by the number of the grades you have, which is the length of the interval. In your case, it's five exams, five minus zero. So this is the idea of the average value. It's literally the average area, if you want to see it this way. Here, is, here, here are your exams, so like a very bad, good one, good one, lower, good one. To find this from A to B, the area looks like so. What is the average grade you have after all? It's the average area, so it's somewhere over here. Average value. It's somewhere on average. That's like the whole point of it. So the title matches here. So imagine you have a problem on a test that asks you to find the average value. You just need to see that word average. I'll put it in bold for you. I already did it actually. Put it in bold and then I will say find the average. You integrate, divide by the length of the interval. For example, example, I don't know, some kind of real life application. The bird population on the island is decreasing. <laughs> Birds population is given as P of T equals, let's do 100, E the minus, you know, it's exponential decay if it's decreasing minus. 0, 2, T. See, negative sign definitely tells you that uh, you feel sad for the birds because that means exponential decay. That's what's supposed to give you a hint. If it's negative, something is decaying. Okay, unfortunately, bird population is going down. And then we're going to ask you, T is the what? T is the number of days, I guess. Why not? And then let's calculate days from... 0 to 300, almost a year. What is the average amount of birds between this and that? Let's see. Find the average number or amount of birds uh, during the time during the time win and we give you t equals 20 and t equals 300 so after three weeks which is 20 more or less to almost a year we want to see the average number of birds on island this will be bold so this is supposed to give you the idea don't forget to divide the result by the length of the interval Solution, what we're asking you to do is, guess what? Integrate, integrate 100, 100 e to the minus 0, 0, 2 t, dt, we're integrating it from 20 to 300, and you will do that, probably you remember that you need to do this, and then just don't forget, this will give you a number which is too large, this is like you're adding all your grades. To find the average, you're supposed to divide by the number of exams you took to find the average grade. Same here, the number of days you were looking at those birds. 300 minus 20 days. Make sense? So remember this. I'm trying to kind of make several hints in your memory that you will remember this when you take the test. Yes? Is there any reason why you took the test? Yeah, because... 
it's going uh, between smaller t 20 to larger t 300 so they so you're sitting there and i told you i saw biologists who won awards by sitting on the island and staring at birds so they say we stared for the at birds for 300 days but let me tell you from 20 to 300 so it's increasing mm -hmm. And now you do it. Some students, they like to integrate it separately and then divide by the number, but I'm afraid you'll forget to divide by this number if you do that. So let's do one over 280 in front, and then you integrate. Oh, maybe kick out the 100 outside. Why do you need to be inside of the integral? I love kicking out constants from the integral because then it looks uh, cleaner. Yeah. Like so, from 20 to 300. So they gave us 20, 300, we know that. And 300 minus 20 is in a denominator. And now we, we actually reviewed how to integrate these types of integrals last time. 100 over 280 can be simplified actually, but later. Integral of exponential function. Remember, you copy the exponential function with whatever it has. And then you look at the exponent and divide by the leading coefficient. I'm dividing by negative 0, 0, 2. I'll just put it in a different color. That is chain rule. That is use substitution, but fast use substitution. Basically, when doing chain rule, you're supposed to multiply by a different chain by negative 0, 0, 0.02. But in this case, you divide. Instead of plus C, you have a bar from 20 to 300 equals. Guess what? We just plug the top minus the bottom, and we're done. 100 over 280. Now it's also 1 over negative 0 0.02. And now I will open brackets, and I will plug E minus 0, 0, 002 times 300 minus E minus 0, 0, 002 times 20. Plug it in, calculate whatever this number is, or choose it from the multiple choice scenario. But if you calculate and calculate it, just be careful, put all the parentheses and the brackets and so on. What do you think about this? Can you do this? Average value. Kind of, that is the answer. I just don't want to calculate the answer. This is the value, yes? Not too bad. So this is literally my question, like, can you do it on Monday, you know? This is what we're gonna ask you to do, so. If you feel confident with this, very good. If not, put a star or exclamation mark and review it at home. Yes? And the example you want to simplify It probably will be multiple choice, so you don't have a choice. You will have to simplify to choose it from the list. I can see that, yeah. Regression. I don't know, you guys see in your homework, it's kind of annoying for the regression problems. But again, they are very pliable, so they teach it to biology students on purpose. Because, you know, you guys always ask, why do we learn this? Well, this is why we learn it's data science, to be honest. So, hmm. let's do one of the examples of the regression. Because it will be on a test. One example will be on the test, so you should know. I guess you should know. Regression. Regression. You're supposed to learn how to use your calculator, so watch my previous class, or Google, I would just Google if you want to. The example is about how fast the rumor is going through this school. Very interesting example. I heard this example before. It's actually true that you can calculate how fast the rumor is spreading at school. The number of students, students that had heard the rumor originally, had heard the rumor T hours after, if after it showed up, interesting, after it was started. It was started is given by the chart. So it's kind of true. You can actually go back and ask people when you can spread the rumor, even something just like, oh, I think today for lunch, there will be watermelons. And then you can actually walk around and ask people, have they heard about it? And if they did, when? And then you collect the data. So it's literally collection of data and then analyzing the data 
situation. And that's why it is part of the data science class. So T is the time and the number of students is N. So right away, five people heard the rumor. See, at time zero, very interesting. In two hours, you asked around, and now you know that 20 people now heard about this rumor. In four hours, 80. In six hours, that was a lot of people to ask, but 2.30, this is how fast the rumor is spreading. In eight hours, it is 3.80. 10 hours, 4.30. And then 12 hours, 4. Or zero. So I don't know the answer, what kind of uh, model is that, but it looks like it's increasing way too fast. So that kind of gives me the idea it's probably exponential, unless, unless it's a realistic problem where you don't have infinitely many of students. The more students got covered, that's what epidemics is about. The more people got sick, the slower the epidemic spreads because of the lack of people who are not sick anymore. So the bacteria doesn't have a choice to find people who are not sick anymore, and that's why it's decaying at some point. Same with the rumor. If everyone knows it, it slows down now. So it's not so many people to cover. So either it's exponential, I can see, because the numbers jump way too fast. Or it's exponential, and then slows down, and it's logistic one. So you guys know how to plot it. I hope so. Use the calculator. I would actually use my pencil and pen, but it's because I'm an old-fashioned person, and see how it looks. It looks pretty logistic to me too. At zero, it was five. At two, it jumped to 20. At four, it jumped three, uh, four times higher. That's crazy. At six, four times higher again. At eight, it starts slowing down, but still super high, like so. This big jump at the very beginning tells me like, wow, that is a big jump. So, but you're supposed to use your calculator to make sure. And uh, it's supposed to tell you, so first of all, we did not ask the question, but still, if you want to create a plot, you go to create a scatter plot, adjust the window, turn on plot, plot it in the, in the terminal what model to use, find your model, answer the question. You click stat, calc, and then you see what is it. So when you do the dots, we kind of agreed, it does look like logistics one okay let's agree all of all of us agree what the logistics difference between exponential exponential looks exactly like so but it's keep growing forever that's exponential model where logistics also grows really fast but then stucks so logistic model changes the concavity as you can see there is an inflection point somewhere over here we now know that that means something is still growing, but not as fast as the beginning. The beginning of the rumor was very fast, and then it slows down. So that is a logistic model. Same with decrease of exponential function. Exponential function decreases really fast. That is exponential. Some numbers just decay to zero too fast. Or it was to zero. Or it was decaying fast, and then slows down and fixed at some point that is the difference so it's not getting to zero anymore because there's limited number of people left and something like that so you should see kind of these patterns to draw this so you do stat and then calc and then we kind of agree that it looks like button b which is logistics logistic model then you can draw and get the function running and the function apparently from the calculator will be 4 4 4 82 all over 1 plus 120.16 e to the minus 0 81t like so so step one you actually being smart analyzing the function Step two, you use calculator to build the function. The calculator does work for you by creating those constants. Do you know what calculator does? It kind of try to match, it, the calculator tries to match as many functions as possible, twiggling or twitching the constants. Okay, so four, four, five was a bit too much. 
440 bit too few, so it was keep changing until it matched the perfect graph, or more or less perfect graph. Use the regression model to estimate how many students have heard the rumor five hours after it started. Well, guess what? Plug five. Eventually, how many will hear the rumor? Good question. A. How many students students um, estimation, right? How many students heard the rumor? Heard the rumor. Rumor five hours after it spread it, right? After it spread it. Well, I'm gonna just plug five into my function. Y at five is four 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 eighty two. 1 plus, basically when you have a function, you can do all those things we taught you. You can find derivatives, can't keep up, can't keep down, maximum, minimum, and so on. So building the function is a big deal. Plugging here your 5, and it gives you the estimate answer. 144 students. Approximately 144 students. Okay. The other question actually is more interesting. It says, well... What do you think, eventually, how many will hear the rumor? Eventually, such a nice word, eventually. How many will hear the rumor? Question mark. What do you think this question is asking? Eventually, it's not a very clear number. What is eventually? Eventually, I can give you a hint, means in the long run, eventually. So what does that mean? Infinity. Do you understand? Eventually, how many zombies there are going to be out of zombie apocalypse? That literally, we want to wait T to infinity. Eventually, how many cancer cells are going to be at the person when the person dies? That is an infinity. At some point, it is not infinity. In some cases, it's years and or so in some cases days but eventually you know the end of the world when it's gonna come so that means we want to set a t to go to infinity and see what's going to happen if it's the exponential model e to the x at infinity goes to the infinity and that is why logistics model are better because logistics model have this roof this logistics roof which we want to find so I'm going to take this y and find the limit of that y. Literally, this is why we learned limits, and you did not like it, I remember. Uh, t goes to infinity of 1 plus 120, 16 e to the minus 0, 81 t, with 44482. But now it's the question, what do you think is the answer for the limit in the long run? And that's a very typical question in science and STEM, what is happening in the long run? So when you see limits in the book or your study, you're like, I know that. It means in the long run. What do you think is the answer? In. I would just say long run. Right? It's just a numerator. How did you know? Because if in the extreme case, you would be negative. That is a very smart phrase to say. In oh, right, okay. He said, no, no, I like it. In extreme case, the exponential will be negligible. Would, That's pretty cool. E would become, essentially, E would be, would, would decrease the ability to zero. Yeah, I like the way you phrased it. It was very smart. Your vocabulary is really good. Yeah. You might not have it on the tests. <laughs> yeah, you can just say it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You can just say it, yeah, that's good. So eventually in the long run, exponential function shrinks to zero. Zero times 120.16 is zero. Zero plus one is one. So the answer is this number. But we don't have uh, 0.82 students. So let's round it to four, four, five students. And that is the ceiling. Maybe it's the maximum amount of students at school, or maybe it's the maximum amount of students in school that day, or that weak so it might be some kind of roof of number of people that is also a pretty cool idea here so that is important finally 
last thing to show you, let's see. What do you think is the hardest part of the material for now? Because we reviewed quite a lot already. What are you afraid of the most? That's what I think too. I covered everything for you to for you to know on Wednesday and today. I covered everything you need for the exam. We are done. It's very good. This review was very good. But I do feel like you should do one more integration by parts before we go. Just because I feel like you should review it more. So integration by parts. More couple of typical examples. And actually, that's good. If you feel good about all of this, good job. So let's see. Example. U sub and integration by parts. U sub and I, B, P, integration by parts. I was just reviewing this yesterday for my online class as well, but business students. Okay, here is a function for you, an integral logarithm function over, go, go away, over 6x dx. Which method will you choose and how will you proceed? You suck, but I thought we were, want to review integration by parts. Why do you think it's you suck? Do you all agree? So be careful with this. She is right. The derivative, one piece here is derivative of another piece. Not always logarithmic function multiplied by something have no connection. Derivative of log is 1 over x. Good job. See, that means you practiced uh, if you recognize this. I recognize because I practiced a lot, kind of not more than that. Then, if I choose log to be u, 1 over x shows up and will, and will be perfect to be integrated. Do you all see it? If you don't see it, you just try and then if it works, it works. If it doesn't, you try something else. But this is actually u sub because this piece here is u while 1 over x dx is going to be something du. Well, more or less. Maybe it will be better if I actually take out 1, 6. 1, 6, oh, let me rewrite it like so. ln x times 1 over x dx. It's the same integral. I just rearranged a little bit here and this and that. Now it's very obvious, hopefully for you, that this is u and this is perfect du. Thus, it's a u substitution. If u is ln x, du is 1 over, 1 over x dx, then the integral becomes 1, 6 integral u du, and it's the best integral we can hope for. u du, super simple as that. 1, 6 u squared over 2, and I'm writing right away ln squared over 2 plus c. Look at this and tell me if you understand that I skipped this step. 1 over 12, if you want to, ln squared plus c. What do you think about this? That was you sub. And finally, we can do one integration by parts problem, and we are good with everything. The answer? Yeah. U squared over 2. 1, 6. U squared over 2. And then I wrote my U back as LNX. Make sense? Oh. Over 2. Mm -hmm. However, example 1. Example 1. Example 2. How about integral X to the 5? ln x dx. Hmm, 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 hmm. What do you think about this one? U sub or integration by parts? We don't really have more than that. I still see that derivative of log will give you my 1 over x. But, like, will it help me, though? If it doesn't help you, it means it's a product of two not related things. Product of two not related functions should be done using integration by parts. It's integration by parts this time. Integration by parts tells you maybe use Li at hand to help you to choose what u should be. If I choose x to the 5 to be u, derivative of x to the 5 will be 4x to the 4, which is not very helpful. 
But if I choose log to be u, it becomes one over x, which is nice, because you're basically getting rid of this second function. So Liatea also tells you, if you see log, boom, that's your first choice. This is u, everything else doesn't have a choice. It will be dv right away. u is natural log of x. du is 1 over x, dx, we know that. dv is the leftover, which is x to the 5, dx. v is the integral of dv, so it's x to the 6 over 6. Integration by parts was set up correctly. So the integral will be cross product minus bottom product inside of the integral. Equal sign, equal sign, ln x times x to the 6 over 6 minus, let me wait for a second. Integral of the bottom two functions, x to the 6 over 6 times 1 over x dx. Very nice, the first part is ready. So you just have ln x, x to the 6 over 6. This piece is done, no need to do anything. I will take a pencil and simplify the parts inside of the integral. x to the 6 over x is x to the 5. So it's actually 1 fifth, no, 1 6. 1 6 integral of x to the 5 dx. Do you agree? I would do it with a pencil, it's too much writing. And now you integrate that, and the answer is minus 1, 6. Minus because of the formula, by the way. This is formula. x to the 6 over 6 plus c. This is the answer. Unless it's a multiple choice part, then you have to find it in the list. And it should be ln x, x to the 6 over 6 minus 1 over 36, x to the 6 plus c. How about that? So the question is, can you do this on Monday? You see, it's doable, I promise you. There will be no surprises. You will see all of this. Your job is to practice it. And then on Monday, you will see it, and you're like, she was right. It's exactly what I saw right now. You also get 100, and we're going to quit this class, and everything is going to be good.